What's up, guys? Justin with the Podcast Dojo. I think everyone, if not most people in the Dead Mall community, have had their eyes on this particular chain for a while now. I'm, of course, talking about Kmart. Kmart, while not abandoned like most businesses I talk about here, has taken quite the nosedive over the last four or five years. Kmart may have seen a new decade, but how long will this journey last? I want to cover the history of Kmart from its founding day to what it is currently in 2020. I also want to talk about some of the other ventures this company attempted, as this company had, was a lot more ambitious than I originally gave it credit for. So without further ado, let's talk about Kmart department stores. I know a place. I know a place. Where life is good. Where life is good. A brand new place. A brand new place. In your neighborhood. Your neighborhood. Come to my place. Where dreams come true. Come true. My saving place can save a lot of dollars for you. My saving place. The new Solon Kmart will celebrate its grand opening starting Thursday. Hundreds of grand opening specials await you at this and all Cleveland. Let's go back to 1899 when Sebastian Spurring Chris Gay had just dissolved a partnership with John McRory in their five and dime stores. Their stores were located in Detroit and Memphis, and after the partnership was severed, Chris Gay took over the Detroit stores and formed the Chris Gay Company. By 1912, these new stores had 85 locations and were averaging about $10.3 million in sales and would go public on the New York Stock Exchange six years later. In 1929, the first Canadian store would open now, as well as the first suburban shopping center location in America. The store total hit 597 and sales were now at $156.3 million. The first store to be called Kmart opened in Garden City, right outside of Detroit. And with 95% of sales coming from Kmart, all of the stores would be converted to Kmart in 1977. The Great Depression was very brutal for Kmart, but they managed to survive it all even after Kmart stock went from $57.50 a share to $5.50 a share. Kreske promised himself that he would buy 100,000 shares but could not buy them, leaving the company to take the remaining shares off of his hands. During the Depression, Kmart suppliers were going out of business, and Kreske had to f raise Kmart prices, selling many items for $3 despite the $1 ceiling. However, they survived it all, and by the time the Depression was over, there were 682 stores and 27 U.S. states, and 61 Canadian stores, averaging out to sales figures of $158.7 million. Kmart's ambition didn't stop there. In 1967, Kmart attempted their own fast food drive-in called Kmart Chef. However, that stopped in 1974 and only had about 11 locations. In 1984, they acquired Walden Books and Home Centers of America. Even celebrities started getting involved with Kmart with Jacqueline Smith clothing being sold at Kmart in 1985, as well as Martha Stewart's involvement in 1987. Pace Membership Warehouse would be acquired in 1989, and Payless Drugs would be purchased in 1985. In 1990, the logo was changed from red and turquoise to red and white with the word Mart written inside the K, as well as the acquisition of Sports Authority. It was also at this time that Walmart began heavily expanding and Kmart was knocked down to number three in retail sales. Office Max was purchased in 1994 and Borders Books was purchased in 1995. Sports Authority and Office Max would be sold off in the mid-90s to raise money. In June of 1995 was when Kmart had a new CEO, Floyd Hall, who was originally a former chairman of Target stores. Most people believed that Kmart was going to lose the retail war to Target and Walmart, but Hall was determined to let the public know that Kmart was in it to win it. To help improve sales, commercials were aired featuring comedian Rosie O'Donnell, 
and director Penny Marshall. There was also a remodeling program to make the stores look more updated. Many of the remaining stores were working on converting to the Big Kmart formula. The Big Kmart formula included grocery items, a garden center, a pharmacy, a local bank, and even some had Kmart Express gas stations. I actually had no idea there were Kmarts with gas stations. The Martha Stewart line continued to expand to other products such as bedding and even baby products, bringing in even more money for the retail chain. In 1997, Kmart would sell off its remaining shares of Payless Drug to Rite Aid. All of these decisions were made by Hall, brought Kmart to $249 million in net income and $32.18 billion in sales. Confident in how things were going, Hall announced a plan to open up 400 new stores over the course of five years, with half of those being turned into Super Kmarts. So Super Kmarts had everything that a regular Kmart had. However, now there was a full grocery section with meat and poultry, baked goods, garden produce, fresh seafood. There was even a video rental store, a local bank, an arcade, a portrait studio, a pharmacy, a deli cafe or a Little Caesars pizza, and most even had an auto center. Almost seems more like a shopping mall inside a department store. Now you are probably wondering why I have gone this whole video without talking about Kmart's blue light specials, so let's talk about it now. So the blue light special was first introduced in 1965 and retired in 1991. There would be a blue light in front of a particular item or section and that merchandise would be on sale for a discount. The blue light would be like a police light. Unrelated to the failure, but there were these lime green logos used at five prototype locations in 2002. I would love to have seen one of these signs in person. But anyway, Hall retired as chairman in early 2000 and Charles Conway, who had been president of CVS, took over as the new chairman. He even brought back the blue light specials in 2001, but this time to permanently trim costs on 38,000 items. Conway resigned as chairman in 2002, making James P. Adamson the new chairman. Adamson had previously been the CEO of Advantica Restaurant Group, which owned Denny's. With more stores closing, Kmart felt it was time to find a niche to bring customers back to their stores. In 2004, Kmart announced its plans to combine with Sears in an $11 billion deal. Kmart would start this change with its white and blue interior of the stores going from orange to brown, and shelves were lowered to create better sightliness. Most of the auto centers had been converted to Sears auto centers. Store closures would continue to add up, including the original Garden City store in 2017. Apparently Sears and Kmart didn't run any advertising during the Christmas season of 2017 to focus on digital marketing. As of 2020, Sears and Kmart stores are continuing to close. We actually lost our last Kmart here in Richmond as of February 2018, and our last store in all of Virginia closed in 2019. So what do I think happened to Kmart? Well, as I said, I think they were very ambitious in what they had. I was actually quite surprised by all of the things they offered in their stores. Do I think it was the acquisition of other companies? Not really, from what I saw they acquired companies but they were doing okay, unlike Ames who bought stores who were in trouble thus taking on their debts as well. I also feel that Kmart failed to find a niche. Yes they had their blue light specials which was very unique and interesting, but I feel it just was not enough to compete with Walmart and Target. Overall, while I think Kmart would inevitably die out anyway, I think merging with Sears was a big mistake. With the merging of Sears came uglier, outdated looking stores and poor management. How much longer Eddie Lambert can keep this chain alive, only time will tell. Truth be told, my family almost never went to Kmart, so I don't have any attachment to it like, say, most people would have, but I do admire all it went through. I mean, this chain even survived the Great Depression. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the history of Kmart stores. Please share any fond memories you have of Kmart in the comment section below and I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button with notifications enabled and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Like this art implies, to me, Kmart is the red version, with Ames being the green version and James Lay being the blue version. Coincidentally, I have also done a video on these chains as well. Be sure to check them out along with the artist who created this art piece. 
I will leave links to their work down below. Thanks for watching.